What's going on everyone? How are you doing today? My name is The Leaping Lemur and welcome back to another video. Y'all, in this video we'll be doing another weekly recap. In this recap you'll hear me say the phrase, this was a wild week a lot, but soon you'll see why I say that. This is probably one of the most interesting recaps I had to edit, the whole time I was engaged with how the story played out. We started off with Daniel being left by fate grace and of course that resulted in him obsessing over her for days. We also saw Daniel show up late to court and miss another court hearing, which means he might get arrested it again soon. Finally, we finished off the week with Daniel believing he is Jesus and spamming the comments of Grace Vanderwall's newest music video. Just watch as past Lemur explains this week in the Larson universe. So today's video is going to be a long one, folks. I missed Monday and today was a pretty crazy ass day for Daniel. He did his usual schizo posting on TikTok and his community tab, but he also paid for a homeless man's meal and posted it all over social media. But first, let's talk about Daniel paying for this homeless man's cheesecake. Yes, the man who can't even pay for his own food most of the time took it upon himself to help who he describes as a homeless man, as if Daniel isn't in the exact same position. Also, why did he feel the need to record it? I guess we all know the real reason, but anyway, here's the videos. In Golden, Colorado, if you go to this address, they will be able to help you out getting resources. In Golden, Colorado. Mm -hmm. And you could keep the card, so you know the address. Uh, what? Okay, so this is going to be in downtown Golden? Yeah, it's the municipal building, the police station. But they will be able to help you get housing, resources, food. Yes. Do you want this? I don't need it. Yeah. For real? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. There you go. Uh, one cheesecake and uh, that will be it. Just the cheesecake, right? Yeah. Four ninety-three. Do you need a four? Uh, yes, please. Give me one second. I'd like to see the other thing Thank you. Thank you. Do you want the receipt? Oh, no, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm having that. Uh, So after complaining about not being able to get food all the time and dining and dashing numerous times, Daniel decides to do an actual good deed. I mean, I'm sure the guy could have used something more filling than a cheesecake, but that's besides the point. This is instantly ruined by the fact he decided to record it and mention it on his YouTube community tab. Not only that, but Daniel also got his ID taken at a restaurant after not being able to pay the previous night. Daniel describes this incident in some images he posted on TikTok. He first starts off by promoting his Venmo and PayPal. In one image, Daniel promotes the link to his Venmo and writes, please donate for new music. After posting that, a little bit later, Daniel also writes, I'm scared that someone is going to try to call the police on me for trying to get my Venmo account to work right while I have other bills to pay. Daniel will find any little way he could to get people to donate to him. He's obviously having money troubles. I mean, he's got the whole thing now where he'll lie and say he's skipping lunch to save on cash, but in reality, we all know he has none at all. After that, he also starts 
starts talking about trying to cash out his TikTok gifts, writing, I'm trying to get my TikTok gifts to cash out because I have $150 waiting for a deposit. Daniel continues to complain about needing donations and money, as a little bit later, Daniel also writes, the haters just got my PayPal banned, with an angry face emoji. And this ends Daniel's begging saga for now. I feel like this was one of the more better things that Daniel's trolls have got done. Daniel doesn't deserve any donations at all. He isn't entitled to anyone's money. It's wild that he still tries to beg for donations after all he's done. Later that day, Daniel also details an incident that went down in a restaurant. Daniel starts off by writing, I just lied to Bob about leaving my debit card at the restaurant because I was afraid he wouldn't listen to me or understand what's going on. Later, Daniel adds to that writing, I just left my Colorado State ID at the restaurant because I couldn't get a hold of Bob before the blizzard moves in. Somehow, Daniel finds a way to blame everyone else but himself. I mean, God forbid something be Daniel's fault. It's always because Bob made him or some outside force caused it to happen. Speaking of Bob, before we move on, Daniel posted recently, Bob just told me today he is slowly starting to die due to his cancer. It's hard to know if Daniel's being honest, but if he is, I truly feel bad for Bob. A Imagine dying of cancer and in your last moments you have to put up with Daniel's bullshit. Now let's move on to this video Daniel posted just about an hour ago, which is an AI recording of Grace Vanderwall. People are also sending Daniel pictures of Jacob Satorius saying her and Grace are dating, but we'll check that out later. First, just watch this shitty AI video that Daniel really thinks is Grace. Okay, so Daniel lately has been very fucking lazy and it's pissing me everyone off. I think I am going to break up with him because he is too damn lazy and won't do anything to help me or Interscope make money, let alone make content for his career. Yeah, I heard about that with Rick earlier. He isn't cooperating with me either. I think it's time we drop this asshole for good and focus on my career instead. Without management or money, he's just an ugly homeless man in Colorado. Okay, I will tell him the news tonight. Have a good day, Dick. So the trolls have been fucking with Daniel and making these AI videos, which obviously he sees as true. I mean, it's Daniel. You don't even gotta use AI. You can just hire some random chick off of Fiverr to do it. Either way, the trolls have decided this is gonna be their new way to fuck with Daniel's mind. They've also made this whole storyline where Grace is now with Jacob Satorius, prompting Daniel to make this YouTube community post. Daniel writes, and I quote, Jacob Satorius is Clark and Grace Vanderwall and him keep lying to me. We'll have to check in tomorrow to see how this develops, but so far it's seeming like it's gonna be a good arc. The Daniel Larson AI arc. Y'all, Daniel Larson just can't stop. From threatening the FBI to believing in a fake AI phone call of Grace Vanderwall, Daniel has been going through delusions quicker than toothbrushes, folks. Today is no different. Not only has Daniel been going crazier than ever, he's also been banned on TikTok. Probably because he threatened the FBI last week. I mean, what did he expect to happen? I'm surprised he wasn't kicked off the platform after being caught texting a minor. Either way, let's look at Daniel's final TikTok videos. I now have over $300 in my company savings and growing. They don't like me. I have Jefferson County Court set for tomorrow. Bitch. I have just received a call from Dexter about a possible reality show that I will be on. So pretty normal Daniel Larson schizo posting, right? He talks about being able to get a hotel room and how Dexter is his new manager. But in one of these videos, I heard some weird shit. I'm gonna play it back with the volume up so y'all can hear it too. It almost sounds like somebody's whispering. Just listen. I don't like me. I have Jefferson County Court set for tomorrow. Bitch. So at first I thought I was going crazy, but the more I listen, the more I hear whispers saying some weird shit. I can't even think of what it could be. I mean, y'all can comment your theories, but I literally can't think of why it would be edited in the video or how his mic would just pick that up. Maybe his schizophrenic delusions are so strong that it's coming through the camera. Anyway, let's move on to some more weird stuff that Daniel's been posting on his account. 
We all know that yesterday Grace broke up with Daniel, but the trolls also convinced Daniel that Jacob Sartorius is dating Grace now. This saga continues as Daniel still is focused strongly on Grace, to the point where it's becoming concerning. Grace should be aware that Daniel is looking into seeing her, but I'm getting ahead of myself. This all started when Daniel writes, I just canceled my engagement plans for this summer with Grace Vanderwall with a broken heart emoji at the end. Daniel doesn't stop there. From then on out, Daniel is heavily focused on him and Grace. He follows that up by writing, Tina and I are confused with what Grace Vanderwall is doing. Soon enough, Daniel's confusion will fade to anger as Daniel starts to truly believe he was cheated on. He later writes, Grace Vanderwall is about to be in extreme trouble with Tina Vanderwall when she gets home from the hospital. Later, we figure out exactly why Grace is in the hospital, but for some reason, Daniel doesn't initially explain it. He then follows that up with writing about his experience in court, saying, I just got yelled at by the judge because they are calling me and Grace delusional. It's hard to say if this truly happened, but if it did, it was deserved. I hope some kind of authorities do find out about this obsession with Grace. It's starting to become super concerning. He then goes back to talking about being cucked by Jacob Satorius writing, Grace Vanderwall is telling me that she didn't use birth control last night and for me not to tell Tina Vanderwall that she might get pregnant with Jacob Satorius after cheating on me. I wonder who's doing all this shit because it's truly sick. This is going too far. It's one thing to make up a fake person or to use some meme to mess with Daniel, but this is real celebrities. It's highly dangerous. I'm not even trying to be high and mighty or anything. Fuck with Daniel all you want. But what did Grace ever do to anyone? Then we finally get to figure out why Grace was in the hospital with Daniel writing, Tina Vanderwall just hit Grace because she cheated on me. This is where shit begins to get crazy, folks, as Daniel starts to post fake Tina's text straight to his community tab, following that up with this long text reading, I beat the crap out of her for cheating on you, but that's as far as it's going for now because Jacob has housing and he doesn't call Grace names. Daniel, you called her names and you're mean to her and when you thought she broke up with you and she didn't, you dropped housing. Jacob thinks before he acts. Then Daniel starts saying some really concerning things, writing, I just hit Bob so hard he is limping because of Grace Vanderwall cheating on me. I doubt that this actually happened, but the fact that Daniel has these ideas in his head are concerning, especially as we see Daniel start to form his plan to meet up with Grace. After learning about Grace being in the hospital, Daniel starts to ask for donations to go see her, providing his Venmo link in writing. Please donate for an emergency trip to see Grace Vanderwall in the hospital. Then Daniel posts a text from the medical assistant's point of view with that post reading, this is the medical assistant. I'm assisting the doctor and putting her cast both of her hands. Tina and her daughter Grace are both in the hospital. I do not know what floor Grace is on or her condition. I just know it looked really bad. I do not know when she will be released, probably not for several days. We're keeping Tina overnight, possibly longer if her heart keeps acting up. This phone is about to die and she did not bring a charger. This shit's crazy, folks. I mean, Daniel really believes that Grace and Tina are in the hospital. But if you thought that this is the end, you are gravely mistaken. Just a little bit later, Daniel writes, I'm dating Grace Vanderwall again, according to Tina Vanderwall. And then after this, Daniel goes right back to wanting to get engaged to Grace. Shit, he's even gonna raise Jacob's kid as his own. I mean, he doesn't give a fuck. Daniel continues speaking about the engagement, writing, I'm working on Grace and my engagement plans with Tina Vanderwall. For a while, Daniel continues his normal skit so posting going from being angry at Grace one second to planning their engagement the next. A little bit later in the day, Daniel continues speaking about their engagement, writing, I just bought Grace Vanderwall an engagement ring from Macy's. Lastly, Daniel writes, I'm going to be on AGT. He also adds some clarification in the comments, replying two times, writing, Grace wanted me to, I guess, propose to her with the wedding ring that Tina was going to pay for, and now it's our engagement. But probation won't let me until everything is sorted out, which I'm working on, but Grace keeps claiming that things are not happening fast enough, and unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about that. And Tina has told me and Grace that she needs to calm down, and I guess Grace got angry last night and did some things with Jacob behind everyone's back and is now I guess creating a family and probation conflict because Grace doesn't listen. So folks it seems as though Daniel is gonna head down to Pasadena to meet up with Grace. I mean he seems pretty confident in this engagement so we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Y'all it's been a wild week for Daniel. Last time we took a look at him he was worried about his engagement to Grace. While Daniel still mentions it today this doesn't seem to be Daniel's main focus at the moment. Today Daniel seems to be more focused on his court hearing. Basically showing up late to court and quickly leaving to go on what Daniel describes as an adventure. Just watch as Daniel compares him and Bob to two geese and has an orgasm over seeing a train.
two Canada geese fight each other in an argument. That's exactly my friendship with Bob and what we do. I'm the one that's on the right. Bob is the one on the left saying, please don't leave me. You need to help. I know we're in a screwed up situation, but please don't, don't walk away from me. This is all your fault. I don't know where we are, the one on the left says. But the one on the right, he's the one having a real fun time. That's so cool. See the train as far as it can go. Can't even see the end. That is so cool. What the fuck am I watching? What the heck? That looks fun! I'm good. I, uh, I don't want to step in the water. Oh, Let me, uh, move up a little bit. That looks fun, though. It is. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just wondering where the water came from. Oh, thank you. Mind if we take a picture? Uh, sure. Heck yeah. You can do that. Get in here. There's no water. You're fine. <laughs> you like my truck? Yeah, it's nice. Heck yeah. We gotta get this picture. Are right, we gonna hit a point five? You ready? Heck yeah. You got it. Let's get one more. Thank you. Thank you. It was so good to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So good to meet you. You have a wonderful day. You too. So yeah, Daniel had a good time going all over Colorado and recording the different stuff he saw. Honestly, nothing to hate on. Probably some of the most normal Daniel content we've gotten in a while. I mean, as normal as Daniel could get, of course. But this doesn't really translate to his community tab. Daniel starts off by writing, I have Jefferson County Court today for the Olive Garden case with Grace Vanderwall. After this, Daniel makes some irrelevant references to Bob, Tina, and Grace. He even brings Clark back into the mix. Then Daniel continues on about court writing, the Jefferson County Court clerk office just hung up the phone on me because I called them to notify them I'll be late because I don't have a car. I can't imagine how hard it is to have to have a conversation with Daniel. Of course he got hung up on. He probably called the clerk the n-word. Daniel then gives some insight into his charges writing, the judge wants to give me 30 days in jail, 12 months probation, and 48 hours community service for the Olive Garden incident. It's crazy that Daniel keeps getting off the hook for this shit. I mean, we'll see later, it seems as though Daniel didn't even make it to court. He just traveled there, showed up late, and fucked around after he figured out court isn't held all day. It's unclear if Daniel actually skipped court, but I'm leaning more towards the side that he did. He gives us multiple different stories in his community tab, with Daniel first stating, I'm almost to court. A little bit later, Daniel follows that up by writing, My court case just changed. I'm at the courthouse talking to the clerk's office. No court today and they can't find the case. Here's proof I was there. My question is, why didn't they tell Daniel this on the phone the first time he called saying he was going to be late? We see this is probably total bullshit as Daniel quickly changes the story, writing, I just talked to the county clerk office and they told me that I didn't need to show up for the court and it was only for paperwork for the judge. So what is it, Daniel? Was there no court or was it only for the paperwork? Things get even more confusing as Daniel writes, I was at the courthouse, so they can't lie to me and say I wasn't there, even if I went to the courtroom as well. It's not my fault the clerk's office and courtroom was locked and full of people. Yeah, because that makes sense. The court locked everyone in. What exactly is Daniel trying to say? 
No one could get in the building, yet it's filled with people. Shit just doesn't add up. Then Daniel seems to become angry. As he writes, I was late to court because I'm famous and have popularity issues in public with fans and haters everywhere I go. Don't blame that on me when I was at court the same day. At least I showed up. Folks, Daniel is just asking to go back to jail. I mean, he doesn't give a shit about anything at this point. He took all that time to go to the courthouse and worry about the case all day just to fucking show up late and miss it completely. After this, Daniel goes right back to full on schizo posting, writing, I just blocked Clark for releasing the jail footage. Daniel, it took you this long to figure out Clark has been posting all your conversations. I mean, didn't you find out about the college shit not too long ago? How come you didn't block him then? Daniel continues speaking nonsense, writing, Bob has framed me. After this, Daniel becomes increasingly angry at Bob, writing, Bob, go ahead and leave my life. We are done. A little bit later, he also writes this long post about Bob, writing, Bob acts like I'm a murderer or something, and he knows I would never do such a thing. So that's why I sent the death threats, because he acted like a two-year-old. Daniel has such a complicated relationship with Bob. It's like one second he hates the guy and the next he's upset because he wants to spend more time with him. We see this as Daniel writes, I want to spend time with Bob before he dies of cancer. Bob has had cancer longer than Daniel has been obsessed with Grace. I mean, shit, when isn't Bob dying? It's hard to know what's true. Y'all, Daniel has been going pretty crazy lately, but what's new? He still thinks he's getting engaged to fake Grace, but now they've also convinced him that he's the new Jesus. Not only that, but he's also been saying he's going to flee Colorado. So a lot has been going on in the Daniel Larson universe, folks. But first, let's get into these videos. After showing up late to his court hearing, it seems like Daniel's done with his probation altogether. Homie's been bouncing all around Colorado, going to a new place every day. Ever since Daniel's TikTok was banned, he hasn't been posting much short form content. So all we got in was these long, boring lives where he's ranting about whatever comes to his mind. It's even harder to follow than his normal post, folks. But there was a common theme shared in those lives. Just watch, y'all. I'll just pay the bail, go to court, take it to, take it to trial, and then I'm fleeing the country. I agree with Grace on that one. I'll flee the country. I'm not gonna flee the country now. I'll wait till after my court cases are done, but as soon as my court cases are done, I'm fucking leaving. I think I'll move to Ukraine. Now, I'm on the run, pretty much. I'm completely on the run. Bob told me to do it. Bob told me to, that the court needs to realize that I don't have a job, I'm self-employed, and I'm innocent. So, Bob manipulated my way and manipulated my court cases to where I now have to basically be on the run. Which is kind of fucked up. But I'm not going to go to jail and sit there for something that I'm innocent for. So it seems as though Daniel wants to flee Colorado, but it's hard to say if he truly will. He's definitely thinking about it though, which is enough for Daniel's manic mind to act on impulse and truly follow through with the delusion. I mean, we've seen Daniel have a past travel arc, so now we can have a part two, where Daniel is on the run from the law, jumping from city to city, following the nearest flock of geese. But honestly, with the way he's been talking about Grace, I don't think this will be as fun of an arc as most would think. It's likely Daniel will be hyper-focused on this idea of engagement, heading straight to LA where he'd fit in with all the other homeless people there. We see Daniel continue to speak about his engagement to Grace writing, Grace has access to my bank account somehow. Well folks, it looks like we finally found out where all of Daniel's money from Bob has been going. Homie is getting scammed harder than he got pounded by sweet tea. Anyway, Daniel doesn't mention Grace till a little bit later 
later in the day when he writes, I need to stop talking shit about my family now or charges will be pressed. And that includes the Vanderwalls. You might be asking yourself, why is Daniel mentioning his family? Well, folks, Daniel has also been convinced that his mother and father are communicating with him through YouTube comments. Daniel makes some posts referencing this writing crap. I accidentally blocked my mother's account on accident. Daniel seems like he's constantly making these stupid grammar mistakes more and more. It's like, as opposed to what? Blocking her accidentally on purpose? Then Daniel continues writing, How do you unblock people's account on YouTube Studio? He then follows that up with, Emergency, I actually blocked my dad. Y'all, they got so many characters in the Larson universe, it's crazy that now we're also seeing the addition of Daniel's fake parents, both of which want nothing to do with Daniel in real life. Then we get to the good stuff, folks. Let's talk about Daniel's new claim of being Jesus. This all started yesterday when Daniel wrote, Get ready, because I'm being told tomorrow is going to be a lot crazier than it was today from biblical sources and biblical calendar. After this, Daniel doesn't make any more references to religion. Most thought it was a fluke or just another one of Daniel's random schizo posts, but we actually see Daniel speak more about this the next day. But before that, he continues to speak about grace. Today, Daniel has made multiple references to grace, and it seems like he went a lot more harder on the grace delusions than he did yesterday. Let me read a few for y'all. In one, Daniel writes, Grace Vanderwall is already in Colorado and looking for houses. He continues on writing, Grace Vanderwall has an emergency calling to me yesterday. Like I said, folks, Daniel can't write for shit. It makes these incredibly hard to read. Then Daniel goes right back to talking about his engagement to Grace, writing, Grace and I are back engaged. Yes, Daniel, we know. Daniel has broken up and got back with Grace three times this week. It's scary how persistent this guy is. Then Daniel writes, true love is a dangerous game. And then Daniel goes from talking about Grace to making this long post about Bob, which I really wanted to take a look at. I told y'all this was going to be a long video, so let's get into the next post. Daniel writes, Because Bob didn't ever give me a one-time payment so I could get housing and instead played games with my mental health, I demand $10,000 direct deposit by tomorrow so I can fix my savings and get my quarterly 5% interest, or I will leave the state of Colorado. Last warning, look who will be suffering now. This goes back to Daniel wanting to leave Colorado and obviously he's pretty set in the idea. But currently Daniel's in Colorado Springs so I guess we'll have to wait and see if he keeps going or heads back towards Denver. Now let's jump back into Daniel's Jesus arc as Daniel continues pulling a Chris Chan writing, The Vanderwalls are saying I'm the new Jesus or disciple. In the New Testament they say that a new religion or Jesus could be walking on earth, waiting for the right time to make it known. Daniel continues with his bullshit writing, I have been guided by angels. Lastly writing, angels came to me last night at midnight to tell me Grace Vanderwall was the one. So folks, the Jesus arc is in full force. Just a matter of time before the trolls tell Daniel he's immortal and get him killed somewhere out in the middle of Colorado. Y'all, Daniel has had a wild week so far. He has broken up with Grace and then started claiming he was going on the run. Today, we get to see Daniel finally make it to Colorado Springs. In a bit, we'll also see Daniel claim he walked the whole way there, documenting parts of his journey along the way. So let me show you guys the videos Daniel has uploaded today, including one where he shows off where he had to sleep one night. Just watch watch folks righty so this is uh still day three of my 2024 Daniel Larson adventure series I have left Castle Rock Colorado I am now on my way into Monument, Colorado, and uh, it's going to be about an eight hour day, eight hour travel day, so not much post today until the evening, um, but uh, yeah, um, I've been walking now for about 10 minutes. And I've already gone about three miles. So, hi everyone. I am in Colorado Springs. Manitou Springs is right in front of me on the other side of that small hill. And then on the other side of that is Pikes Peak. The one that is snow-capped. The highest one there. 
That one is 14,000, uh, well, above 14,000 feet. And uh, right now, I think Colorado Springs is at, I'm not quite sure what Colorado Springs is at. Good morning, everyone. So, I have left Castle Rock, Colorado. I am now on my way into the Monument, Colorado. It will take me about six hours for me to get there. I will be stopping for lunch about halfway. I will keep everybody updated. This is kind of my current location. And uh, yeah, this is now uh, day number three. It's either three or four of my Daniel Larson adventure. So yeah, Daniel has been having a good time so far on his new travel arc and is going all around Colorado. Y'all might be wondering if Daniel is going to keep going or if he's going to head back towards Denver. Well, Daniel sends some mixed signals on that and we see this in his community tab. At first, we see Daniel seeming as though he's pretty set on the idea, posting in the morning, I have to get ready for an emergency trip to California. He continues writing, I have to get ready for an emergency trip to Las Vegas. Lastly writing, I have to go to an emergency trip to Manhattan. So most would think that Daniel was planning to go on a trip, right? Well, later we'll see Daniel contradict that statement. But before we get to that, let's talk about some of Daniel's random schizo posts from today. These aren't really important, but hold some good comedic value. For example, this post where Daniel writes, I'm exhausted from being overworked and homeless. Just a few weeks ago, Daniel was in a homeless shelter and was in a pretty good situation considering his circumstances. Now he's complaining about how exhausted he is after doing this to himself. Daniel could have kept quiet and not brought his bullshit to the one place he had to sleep. But but as we seen earlier, Daniel is sleeping on the floor now, which is probably why he's exhausted. A little bit later, Daniel writes, I just got a new job. It looks like Sweet T's finally out of jail, folks, and he's recruiting Daniel to go to the streets of Colorado and do what he does best. But in all seriousness, I wonder what the fuck he's referring to. Are the trolls telling him that he's been hired for random jobs? It's like every other day, Daniel has a new job. Daniel also touches on the Baltimore Bridge collapse, writing, I believe the Baltimore Bridge collapse was a terrorist attack because the engine was working. Someone on board the ship was turning it off and on, possibly giving confusion to the rest of the crew. This guy has no idea what the fuck he's talking about. How come every time a big disaster or event happens, Daniel always has to give his weird schizophrenic opinion on it, as if he knows how the fuck a ship like that even operates. But so far, from my knowledge, there's been no proof that this was an attack, so Daniel's probably just regurgitating some shit he saw on the internet. Leave it to Daniel to take away from this tragedy with this bullshit rambling. He continues on writing, someone is definitely hiding information from me and planning to surprise me. What's wild about this is Daniel has been on the surprise ship for a while, even taking it to Grace's comment section. In the comments of Grace's most recent music video, Daniel writes, I'm very sad and depressed, but this isn't the only comment he leaves. He continues coming back for days straight, also writing, you are trying to set a trap and I know it. It's scary when Daniel gets paranoid like this because it's obviously going to end bad when you add his relationship with Grace in the mix. He goes from loving her to thinking she's plotting against him, but that's not the only thing Daniel wrote. He also came back a day later to write, stop cheating on me now or I will expose everything in a video. I don't get how people still think this shit is funny. This girl is innocent and look at what she has to deal with. It's not just fake Grace that's affected by this. He's also harassing Grace's real accounts. Now let's jump back to Daniel's community tab where he writes, if you think I would leave Colorado, you are an idiot. 
Daniel would say some shit with confidence multiple times and then make a post acting as if he never said it a few days later. We seen this with the dine and dashing where we see Daniel state multiple times he took thousands of dollars from restaurants just to go back and say he doesn't know how people got the idea in their head. Maybe it's because you went into detail about it multiple times. Lastly, Daniel makes some schizo posts making a reference to Grace writing Grace did nothing wrong. Following that up with a long post about the FBI writing, the issues are you can work for the FBI and secret service and be jealous of someone famous and still troll and get misinformation. What is Daniel trying to say? Does he actually believe the FBI is trying to troll him? I feel like soon Daniel is going to do some crazy shit and not just freak out at a Panera Bread. I mean get a federal offense for threatening the government, especially if people get him to follow through. Mark my words folks, Daniel is going to do some crazy shit soon. So folks, that's it for this week. It was a crazy one and I was surprised to see how it played out. It was super surreal and I hope y'all were entertained. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and subscribe subscribe, maybe even consider becoming a member for just $2.99. All right, y'all, I'm out of here. Peace.